Welcome back to my course, the Industrial Biotechnology. Now uh, I am going to discuss uh, that upstream processing. Uh, I, uh, as you know, that uh, in the fermentation industry, that uh, one important uh, aspect is the sterility. And sterility, uh, when we when we concern about the sterility, that we try to find out what is the possible avenue through which we can have the uh, contamination problem and one main culprit is the air and second is the media and third is the uh, maybe your uh, fermentation vessel so uh, and uh, so everything should be sterilized because of whatever do we do that everything should be sterilized so air yes, sterilization is a very important aspect because most of the biochemical industries they are operated under aerobic conditions and I, I told you that microorganism can take the oxygen which is dissolved in the in the media. They cannot take the oxygen which is present in the air. So uh, the mass transfer of the oxygen to the fermentation media is very important. And so uh, since the oxygen is sparingly soluble in 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 water, so you have to you have to spurt the air more and more so that more. Uh, trans oxygen transfer takes place, so that that limitation problem of the, uh, the dissolved oxygen limitation problem can be overcome. So, since we are space is passing air more and more, there is a possibility of contamination problem in the in the uh, in the fermentation process. So, uh, so question comes: How we will will we'll sterilize the air now? For an effective aerobic fermentation process, the air should be completely sterilized and uh, sterile and free from all microorganisms and suspended particles. There is a wide variation in the quantity of suspended particles and microbes in the atmospheric outdoor air. Now, here I want to uh, tell you a couple of things that uh, particular one thing I want to mention that uh, biochemical industry is usually uh, should be located in li little bit higher altitude and why it is higher altitude because if you go to the higher altitude the uh, the, the particulate matters present in the uh, in the in the air will be less and also you should not be in the in metropolitan cities where you have particulate matter co concentration in the air is very high because why the reason is that these particulate matters they are the carrier of microorganism so more microorganism presence the air so your sterility of the cell problem will be more so it is usually prescribed that uh, you should be in a place where you have less particulate matters present in the air now the microorganism may may be in the range of 10 to 2000 <coughs> per cubic meter while the suspended particles might be 20 to uh, 100 uh, um, uh, that rate, about the 10000 per cubic meter among the microorganism present in the air fungal spores 50% gram negative bacteria 40% they are the dominants now airborne microbes uh, uh, now now question comes that uh, that uh, what kind of microbes uh, the removal you are required in your system that is very important i work with the citric acid industry and we found that in our fermentation process our main culprit is the yeast cells and uh, when we uh, when we uh, when we use any kind of uh, sterility process then we should always target that uh, what kind of organism you are going to remove and this can be removed in different ways you can remove uh, um, as i will discuss the different uh, process one after another uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, this mainly consists of species of bacteria bacterial spores yeast fungi and viruses the size of this organism varies from 0.5 to several hundred microns the airborne particles which have to be destroyed or collected during the air sterilization are about the size of small bacteria namely 0.5 to 1 microns now what are the sterilization technique that we have the air sterilization technique that we have we have physical separation technique what do you call uh, filtration 
and filtration can be done in so many ways. We can use the fibers, we can use uh, a kind of membrane through the physically you can separate and there is the heat, heat, uh, but heat is not uh, suitable for sterilizing the air because air is a non-conductor of heat. So, you require a higher amount of heat for removing the, uh, the contaminants and then UV rays. Now, two type of, <coughs> two type of air uh, we shall have to sterilize, one is stagnant air and it is moving air. Now, when you talk about uh, for, uh, that any kind of fermenter, so in sparging air, this is the moving air. The air is passing, uh, you have to sparge through the, through the sparger. So, um, for that uh, usually we, we use the kind of physical separation technique, what you call filtration. But in case of uh, stagnant air, we use some either uh, UV rays or uh, germicidal space. As for example, we know that in the operation theater in the different uh, 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 hospitals and there uh, this is usually with, that should be jumpy and then that they usually do with the help of UV rays. But in the fermentation industry like uh, I can give the example of cheese making industry that where the cultivation is usually done in the open vat because the, the card formation usually take place in the open vat and the room should be mm, sterilized and this sterilization of the stagnant uh, air is done with the help of germicidal spray. Uh, germicidal, I can give the one example of chlorine. Chlorine is a very, has very good germicidal effect. It gives the, it kills the contaminants to a great extent. So, so uh, this is the thing that we have. So here in this, uh, in this lecture, mostly I shall concentrate on the uh, this uh, um, air that is contaminants present in the moving air that uh, because heat is uh, not no good for the heat sterilization of the air. So, filtration is a very, filtration is kind of physical separation process through which we can separate the particulate matters or cell present in the air. Now, that uh, filtration we have two types of filter we use. One is called depth filter and this is the membrane filter. A depth filter is a filter consisting of either, either multiple layer or single layer of media having the depth which captured the contaminants within the a structure as opposed uh, to on the, on the surface. Let me give the very simple example. Suppose, suppose I told you glass full fiber, glass full fiber. Now, glass wool fiber is uh, looking like this. So, the, you, you, so you suppose you have uh, this is the here, we, we put some kind of mesh here, and this is the glass wool fiber. So, you, we can complex, we can, we, can, we, can, we can make it complex, we can uncompress also. If you make it complex, your pore size will be minimum, and in uncomplex, will be pore size will be mode. So, as per your requirement, as for example, I told you I, uh, I work with the citric acid industry and our, our main culprit is the yeast cells. Our main culprit is not the bacterial cells. The yeast cells has the size about 3 microns to 7 microns, 7 microns. So, if the pores are the, the, we compress in a manner so that yeast should be removed. Most of the yeast, yeast even some bacteria popular through the filter does not affect our process to a great extent. So, uh, this is the, this is the uh, depth filter that we have and membrane filter is very simple that we have a membrane here and the membrane has some pores and inside the pore as per uh, and uh, the, so, <coughs> so, basic uh, difference between the membrane filter and the depth filter is that membrane filter we have some lot of operational problem because if we if we reduce the size of the pore, then um, then uh, life of the membrane because the pressure across the membrane will be very high. If pressure across the membrane is very very high, then the life of the membrane will be reduced to a great extent because uh, the, and or not only that fouling of the membrane surface and other things, uh, regeneration of the membrane that will be very difficult. Those are the problem very uh, we have very problem because in case of membrane filter. That is why industry 
particularly in the fermentation industry we go for depth filter by as for example glass wool filter we use. Now, in the depth filter if the, if the air pass through a glass wool containing the depth filter and particles are trapped and removed. The filtration techniques primarily involve physical effect of inertia blocking that uh, gravity static uh, attraction, uh, electrostatic attraction and the diffusion. That I shall explain one after another how it is done. That uh, uh, first uh, let us, uh, so we have the inertial impaction, we have diffusion, we have interception, we have electrostatic attraction and the gravitation, how it is the particle separation take place. So, uh, single fibers, uh, we, can, we can assume that uh, single fibers and it is, uh, if I take the cross section, this is a fiber and if you take the cross section, it will be, it looks like this, it is a circular and cross. Now, at the perpendicular, perpendicular to the, if the air is flow like this, we can do the analysis of the system like this. So, we, 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 we make a, this like this single, uh, single cylinder fiber is placed perpendicular to the aerosol flow in, in an infinite space and that the air flow around the cylinder is lamellar with no vortex. The following analysis is the two dimensional. The inertial impaction, let me tell you what you call the inertial impaction, the suspended of the particle in an air stream has a momentum. Now, uh, air in which the particles are suspended will flow through the filter by the route of less resistance. However, the particles uh, because of their mo momentum tends to travel to in straight line. Now, uh, we know Newton's uh, first law of motion and first law of motion says that uh, particle, every particle try to move in the same direction because uh, the due to inertia of forces. Now, if if your inertia force is very high, because there, there is a minimum velocity of the air stream is required for having this inertial impaction. The, if you have the, uh, more than that, then what will happen here? You can see the particle is moving. Normally, it is moving like this and touching the surface like this. When you say the inertial impaction, instead of moving this path, it will follow the straight path because this is the part your air is flowing straight. So, the inertia instead of going this way, it will go, it will follow the straight path and deposit it on the surface of the solid matrix. And this is called, if the particle collected through this, we call it particle collected due to the inertial impaction. So, the if you if you look, then look at here, the flow pattern of the particle deviate from those of the air flow due to the inertia of the particle as they approach the cylinder because because this is this happens due to the high velocity of the fluid now in the figure the width of the upstream is denoted as b and particles that are moved in the streamlines of air beyond b will not touch the cylinder cylinder surface even after they deviate from the air streamline near the cylinder. Then the collection efficiency of single fiber due to inertial impaction is usually expressed B by dF. What is B? B is the, so, uh, the effective width. So, what I want to know that uh, this is which width of this uh, air stream is effective. Maybe this is effective for here if you as you know that if the there is a particle present there, then it can straightway deposit it on the surface of the this fiber. This is like this. That is why we consider this is a effective width of the air stream. And uh, diameter of the fiber is this is the diameter of the fiber. So, uh, so collection efficiency of single fiber due to inertial in, in effect of the particle is zeta equal to b by e by df. Now here the eta will be equal to 0 when psi is equal to 1 by 16. What is psi? It is called inertial parameter. This is equal to c into rho p d p square v 0 into 18 mu into d f. The c is the c is the Cunningham correction factor, rho p is the density of the particle, d p is the 
particle diameter, d f is the uh, fiber diameter and rho is the viscosity of the air. The critical velocity is equal to that uh, is this one. That means, the if the velocity is more than the critical velocity, then and only then your particle will collect it through the inertial impaction. That is the main thing all here. Then let me explain what you call interception. Interception means the that you know that when particle moves here in the in the in this uh, in this uh, line, the particle intercept with the fiber just deposited on the it on the line it is there. Now, when, when it is possible, it is possible suppose, <coughs> suppose the particle is going like this. Now, if this particle the radius is is equal to the this width, then and only then it will touch the surface of the fiber. Otherwise, it will not touch the surface of the fiber. So, this is the, if the particle is collected like this we call, call it the particle collected due to the interception. So, uh, this occurs by several mechanism uh, more than one particle may arrive at a at a port simultaneously and irregularly shaped particles may bridge a port and once a particle have been trapped by a mechanism other than the interception the port may be partially occluded enabling the entrapping of smaller particles. So, this is the problem that we have. Now, this efficiency can be expressed by the collection efficiency due to interception is expressed like this. Now, here we come across the one geometrical new term what you call geometrical ratio. What is the geometrical ratio? Geometrical ratio is nothing but diameter of the particle divided by diameter of the fiber. This is called geometrical ratio and a NRE is the Reynolds number. Reynolds number is the flow characteristics of the fluid, the d u rho y mu. This is d f is the uh, diameter of the fiber, v is the velocity of the liquid that is the air and rho is the density of air, air and mu is the viscosity of air. Now, diffusion is something different. This, uh, this is usually take place at a very low velocity of air because then the particle moves in the Brownian movement. Why? What is the Brownian movement? This particle strike this particle, this particle again strike this particle, again strike this particle. Ultimately, it deposited on the surface of the solid matrix. And if the, if the particle deposited with the solid matrix like this, we call it particle uh, the, the collected through the diffusion. The extreme small particles suspended in the air are subjected to Brownian movement which is randomly move uh, which is uh, which is randomly movement due to collision with the fluid molecules so if I, if i if i want to draw like this that uh, <coughs> plot this collection if overall collection efficiency versus the velocity of the fluid velocity of the fluid the superficial velocity of the fluid we can have the plot like this so, this is very important because you know that here you have three different section that uh, this is here, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. So, here the particle mostly collected due to the diffusion, this is the interception and this is mostly due to the inertial impaction at the high velocity, this is inner. But here again there is a called critical velocity because in case of uh, inertial impaction we have come across one critical velocity. Critical, what is that critical velocity above which the particle collected due to the inertial impaction because, uh, but this critical velocity is what? Because above this velocity if you keep on increasing the velocity of the air a time will come that your dragging force of the air is so high that it take the particle out from the fiber. So, what will happen? The performance of the fiber will take down. So, for designing of air filter, we shall have to always consider this critical velocity. The velocity uh, under when you design the under no circumstances, 
the air velocity should be more than this. So, the air velocity should be always less than that. This is the for designing is very much essential. Now, particle that overall collection efficiency due to this diffusion is expressed like this. Now, here uh, in case of interception we use N r and now N r is the geometrical ratio. Now, this is, this is usually uh, replaced by 2 x 0 by f. Now, 2 x 0 represented a displacement of the particle that is called how, how much path is, uh, is the, 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 the move that is 2 x 0 and then the collection efficiency is calculated like this. So, it is exactly similar to uh, the, the same as our uh, particle collected. So, the interception only the difference is that your d p is replaced by 2 x 0. Now, particle also can be collected with the help of electrostatic attraction, but it is insignificant. Why it is insignificant? It has been found that there are different uh, uh, organisms like uh, I can give a typical example of bacillus subtilis that if you look at the charge distribution of bacillus subtilis, subtilis is different that you know b, 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 maybe 70 percent is uh, b, um, maybe b neutral, maybe b, b positive, maybe uh, t, um, the 25 20 percent might be the other charge and uh, 5 per 10 percent might be the other charge. That you know that if the distribution of the charge of this organism is different, then naturally the even your 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 um, your fiber has the particular fiber it does a, is that only one charge may be positive charge. So, if it is positive charge it will attract only the negative charge. Now, if your particles has both positive, negative and neutral charges. So, it is the electrostatic uh, particle separation through for the electro due to the electrostatic attraction can be neglected. Now, since uh, in the in the air filter we target the smaller particle so, and smaller particle is very low density. So, uh, the particle separated through a gravitation also can be neglected. So, so usually the overall collection efficiency can be expressed at eta 0 1 dash eta 0 2 dash eta 0 3 dash. So, this is collection efficiency due to inertial impaction, due to interception and due to diffusion. Now, question comes that uh, what are the selection criteria for, uh, for choosing this air filter? There is the several selection criteria through which we can select the air filter. One is the filter retention efficiency. What is the efficiency of the filter? This is very plays very important role. Then economy of the operation, uh, <coughs> because how much money we are going to spend for that. Age of filter use, how easily we can use use the filter, and service provided by the manufacturer. This is very important because because these factors that uh, that uh, they, they affect the selection criteria of the air filter. The most important selection criteria. Filter, filter efficiency and reliability of the organism uh, retention. In this record, the fixed submicron pore size membrane will provide the highest level of filtration efficiency. Now, I, I was saying that you know there is a term called absolute filter. Absolute filter means absolute means what? That you know suppose your, your, uh, when we use the membrane, membrane has a definite pore size at the 0.5 microns. So, if you 0.5 microns, whatever particle has uh, more than 0.5, that retain in the fiber. So, all the particles will be removed in this uh, that you know that is the absolute filter that we have. Now, uh, and uh, use the hydrophobic filter material minimizes or eliminate the concern of filtered weighting due to the air moisture content. This is another important characteristics we have. Now, here when you talk about the depth filter that I was talking about the glass wool fiber. Now, question comes why we are selecting the glass wool fiber, why not jute fiber, why not the cotton fiber. The reason is that <coughs> that you know that if you if you if you I told you there is a term called drag coefficient. Now, drag coefficient in case of uh, particular one Reynolds number <coughs> when we use that in case of uh, glass wool fiber and in case of uh, this uh, uh, in uh, jute fiber or uh, cotton fiber 
the DAC fiber, DAC coefficient in case of cotton fiber, or jute fiber is much high as compared to that of <coughs> glass wool fiber. And this DAC coefficient again this is uh, correlated with the pressure drop across the filter. If the pressure drop is more across the filter, then there will be friction because more friction then more will be the pressure drop, less friction less will be the pressure drop. The more friction means that uh, more heat will be generated. Now, if more heat generated, the in case of jute fiber and cotton fiber, it will catch fiber, catch fire very easily. But in case of in case of glass wool fiber, it, is not, it can withstand high temperature, so it will not catch fiber so easily. So that is the advantage that we have. <coughs> so that is the one reason we use the glass wool fiber in the industry. This is the depth with depth fiber that the rate of removal of the particle can be expressed like this d d d d n by d x x is the <coughs> filter depth and n is the concentration of the particle. This is follow the first order kinetics and uh, we can express like this. This is uh, n by n zero. How we can uh, express like this? this <coughs> then we can have this uh, e value that we can easily calculate. And, and we can find out for 90 percent removal uh, what is the uh, expression will be 2.303 divided by k that now now if you plot uh, this uh, k value that is the removal efficiency that is uh, with the linear velocity keep on increasing with that then it is, is a decreasing that uh, your efficiency also they increases but again it again removal will be affected because at the higher velocity what is happening at the higher velocity I told you the drag force is so high it will detach the particle from the glass wool fiber and it will take it out. Now uh, the increase of K with the increase of air velocity is probably due to increase of impaction and illustrating the importance of contribution of the mechanism makes to be, uh, to, be to the removal of the microorganism the decrease of K value at the higher velocity is probably due to the disruption of the filter allowing the channel to develop and fiber to vibrate and resulting the release of previously captured organism. So, <clears throat> there is a problem here and it is required to provide a 20 cubic meter um, fermenter with air at a rate of 10 cubic meter per minute for a fermenter lasting uh, 100 uh, hour. Uh, from, from an investigation the filter material to be used the optimum linear air velocity was shown as 0.15 meter per second at which the value k value is uh, suppose 1 point uh, but k should be the small k by mistake it is uh, capital K this is 1.535 centimeter inverse the dimension of the filter may be calculated as follows this is very simple so we can we can calculate that we can n n by n zero equal to k into x then we can we can find out how much what is the n zero value how we can calculate the <coughs> the we have uh, this we assume the air contains about 200 microorganism per per cubic meter now how much organism the air is there 10 cubic meter per minute then multiplied by 60 minutes so an hour then uh, then 100 hours so you want to operate so we will find out how many how much microorganisms is there then we, we we find out what is the n value we want to because the acceptable degree of contamination 1 in 1000 this i want to want to point out when we design any kind of air filter we shall have to assume that uh, what uh, what we are going to do 1 out of 100 1 out of 10000 1 out of uh, 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 hundred thousand. So, uh, as per your uh, the, the process is concerned, you can decide on the basis of that you can design your air filter. And if you put this value, you can find out the value of x. X is nothing but the depth of the air filter. This is coming about fifteen point one two centimeter. Then again, if you if you um, if you calculate this uh, uh, this uh, the diameter of the tubes you can find out this is a coming at 0.59 meter and uh, then then the, the membrane filter I already talk about 
only examples are cellulose nitrate and cellulose diacetate, polycarbonate and polyester that is used. The pore size ranging from 0 0.05, 1 micron to 12 microns. So only the problem is that I told you that in case of membrane filter life is a life is very short because uh, uh, so uh, and uh, maintenance cost will be very high and uh, as you know that uh, and that you know operational cost depends on the pressure drop across the uh, b b particular in the process in the pressure drop in case of membrane filter is very high so our operation cost will be very high in case of so that is not usually uh, adopted in the industry thank you very much